If you're a beginner, you might not even know that your bass tone totally sucks. I'm Josh with Bass Buzz. I'm going to give you six foolproof bass tone fixes so by the end of this video, you sound like a real bass player. Let's rock! So what is tone? Tone is how your bass sounds and feels, and the same notes can sound really different depending on the tone. So here's the same bass line over and over again with a bunch of different tones so you can hear what I'm talking about. Good tone comes from a mix of your gear and your hand technique, so let's get started at the beginning with fix number zero? Okay, this isn't exactly a tone fix, but your bass definitely won't sound good if you don't do it. Here's two recordings of the same bass line. You tell me which one sounds worse. Which one sounded worse? It was the second one, right? That's <laughs> because my bass was really out of tune. And a lot of beginners don't tune their basses often enough. I recommend you tune your bass every day, at least until you get an ear for whether your bass is in tune or not. And if you need help getting in tune, you can head over to BassBuzz.com and check out my free Bass Basics series where I'll take you through that. Our first real bass tone fix is to pluck properly. This is the most important of all the fixes I'm going to talk about, which is why I talk about it in so many lessons. To get consistently good sounding plucks, you need to pull across and not up. So listen to the difference. I'm just going to pluck an open A string. Here's if I'm pulling up and away from the bass. And here's if I pull across towards the E string. Let me show you that at another angle. So here's up and away. And here's across. It sounds better, right? It's fuller and it's rounder. Okay, now you do that with me. Make sure you got this. So open A string plucking. Let's try pulling up and away from the bass first, like a naughty beginner who hasn't been told what to do. Okay, hear all that sounds? And now start pulling across so your fingers actually run into the E string after every single pluck. Sounds different, right? It sounds a lot fuller and rounder and like you really know what you're doing. We're about to move on to fix number two, but first you should click subscribe and then click the bell so that you actually get notified when new lessons come out. Okay, ready? Ready? Did you do it? Did you do it? Okay. Listening time again. Here's two versions of the same bass line. You tell me which one sounds worse. So which one sounded worse? It was the second one again, right? And that's because my fingernail was grabbing the string on some of my plucks. So fix number two is to cut your nails. <laughs> the hardness of your nails makes a harsher plucking sound that's not good for a lot of styles. And it can make your sound inconsistent if your nails are grabbing the string some of the time, but not all of the time, like in the second example. And if you let them grow out too far, it'll be hard to play bass at all. Our third tone fix is to learn string basics. There are like a million different brands of strings, but there are really only two things you need to worry about for most bass playing. First is whether you want flat wound or round wound strings. Flat wounds get their name from the flat wire that the string is wrapped with. This makes them smoother on your fingers and gives them a darker, more vintage -y sound. Round wounds are wound with round wire and they tend to sound brighter and more zingy. Let me demonstrate. Here are my two Made in Japan Fender Precision Basses 62 reissue. 
and they're basically the same base except for the paint job and the fingerboard wood but this one has flat wounds and this one has round wounds let's hear how they sound <laughs> The second thing you need to think about is how often to change your strings. Older strings start to sound darker and duller and more vintagey, and new strings tend to sound more bright and zingy. Check it out, here's my Squire Vintage Modified Jazz Bass with old Diodario round wounds that I've had on it since our beginner bass reviews like three years ago. <laughs> Now I'm going to put on a fresh set of the exact same strings and let's see how it sounds. It's the final countdown. We leave it together. Okay, are we still recording? So what should you use? Flat wounds, round wounds, new strings, old strings? It really depends on what you're playing and what sound you want. If you tend to just play in one style of music, you should just look up what your favorite bass players do in that style and copy whatever strings they're using. If you like to play a bunch of different styles, I recommend that you use round wounds because it's easier to get round wounds to sound like flat wounds by doing tricks with your knobs and your EQ, which I'll talk about in a bit, but it's hard to get flat wounds to sound bright and zingy like round wounds. The thing is that unless you're a session musician, exact string choice doesn't really matter all that much because live sound at an actual gig is a mess. There's people talking at the bar and spilling drinks and shattering glasses and the sound guy is probably just taking a cigarette break during the beat. Fix number four is to learn your pickups. Most basses either have one or two pickups. If you have just one pickup like this Fender Precision split pickup setup, then there's nothing for you to really do here with learning your pickups. Your bass is just gonna sound the way that it sounds. But your bass might have two pickups, like this Fender Jazz Bass. This one's called the neck pickup because it's closer to the neck, and this one's called the bridge pickup because it's closer to the bridge. So neck pickups tend to sound more growly and bassy. And bridge pickups tend to sound more mid-rangey and trebly. The bridge pickup by itself tends to be too thin and trebly for a lot of bass playing, so if you're a beginner, I recommend you either use your neck pickup or blend both pickups together, which will work for 99% of bass lines. Fix number five is to learn your knobs. If you have knobs on your bass and you don't know what they do, you are in the danger zone. Danger zone. Different basses have different electronics and knob setups, so you need to look up your specific instrument online. But I'll walk you through a few really common knob setups. First, the classic two knob setup on a Fender Precision bass. This knob controls the volume of the bass and this knob controls the tone. So the volume knob, if I roll it counterclockwise, I get no volume, if I roll it Clockwise, I get all the volume. 
And the tone knob you can think of as a vintage switch. So if I roll counterclockwise, I get less tone which sounds duller and darker. And if I roll it clockwise, then I get more tone, which is a little clearer and brighter. Okay, the Fender Jazz three knob setup. This is just like the P bass, except now we have a volume knob for each pickup. So if I kill the volume on both of those, I get nothing. If I roll up the neck pickup volume clockwise, then I get neck pickup. If I turn that off and I roll the bridge pickup clockwise, then I get bridge pickup. If I roll them both up, then I get 50-50 half of each pickup. And the toad knob, same thing. If I roll it clockwise like I have it, I get a brighter, more modern sound. If I roll it counterclockwise, I get a darker, more vintage sound. Last, I'll show you my PV Cirrus, which has five knobs. There's master volume, pickup blend, and then bass, mid, and treble EQ, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. So uh, again, master volume, counterclockwise is none, clockwise is all of it. Uh, pickup blend gives me neck pickup if I go clockwise. Uh, counterclockwise gives me bridge pickup. In the middle, I get 50-50 of each pickup signal. And then bass, mid, and treble knobs, what I generally do and what I recommend you do if you're a beginner with an active EQ like this, just leave everything in the middle and worry about EQ when you get to the amp to keep things simple. Our final tone fix, fix number six, is nail the EQ. Amp EQ is a really powerful tool which means that you can make a huge mess if you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Your amp probably has at least three EQ knobs, bass or low, mid, and treble or high. This amp has four EQ knobs because the mids are split, but as a beginner, I recommend that you just focus on dialing in your bass and treble first. So let's do that together. Get your amp ready, get plugged in, and set all of your EQ to noon right in the middle. Let's pluck our open E strings so that we can turn knobs with our fretting hand. Uh, starting with the bass knob, which will balance you between boomy and thin. So first, let's make it sound really thin by going counterclockwise as far as you can go. Which sounds terrible, right? Where did the bass go? Thin is no good. So now slowly roll that up. And here the bass starts sounding fuller and bigger and rounder. And then keep going until it's too much and it feels boomy like there's an earthquake in your house. Apologize to your neighbors. Okay, so now just roll it back down until it feels good, which is usually going to be somewhere around the middle, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on your gear and also what room you're playing in. So you've got your bass knob somewhere that feels good to you. Now we're going to move to the treble or high knob, which will balance you between being bright and being muffled. So uh, let's play our open D string now. It'll be easier to hear the effect of the treble knob than if we're playing the open E. So again, let's start by cutting it all the way counterclockwise, which will make your bass sound kind of muffled and dull. You can play some notes on the D string to really hear that. Okay, just play some notes, hear how muffled that sounds. Now pluck your D string and turn the treble knob up here it's kind of like lifting a blanket off of the bass and then just keep going until it starts sounding all nasty and overly bright and zingy. Okay, play some notes on your D string. Okay, so let's roll that back down until it stops sounding so nasty and zingy. Okay, again, somewhere in the middle is probably gonna be fine. You might need a little bit more or a little bit less depending on your gear and what room you're playing in. So just remember that your bass knob will balance you between boomy and thin, and your treble knob will balance you between bright and muffled. And we haven't dealt with the mids, and that's because as a beginner, I really recommend that you just focus on the bass and treble. There are a lot of right answers in the area of mids, and different amps have different mid knobs that do different things. So if you just set your mid knobs at noon and worry about the bass and treble, you're gonna be well within the safe zone 
for bass tone. Please click like if this video helped you and subscribe for more. Now you don't have to worry about your bass sounding like crap because you're in tune, you're plucking properly by pulling across and not up, you cut your nails, and you know the basics of strings, pickups, knobs, and amp EQ. Let me know which tone fix helped you the most in the comments and I'll see you soon. <laughs> Shit, that sounds bad. Woo! Round wounds are round with round. <laughs> round wounds are round. <laughs> wound with round wire.